now. All right, so it is recording. Microphone's good, okay. So I'm just gonna, this is of course, these slides are already in your Brightspace environment, so you can just take a look at them there. But I will provide a little bit more detail and then we'll just get into the problems. Okay, so you should be seeing the whiteboard here. Uh, so last week, uh, we started, we, we didn't start fine. So fine will be a, a completely new topic today. But on the agenda today, will be to, um, you know, wrap up Grappenock. Grappenock. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the find command. Find command. And then you'll have two problems related to this that I will give you, and that, that will be two homework assignments, basically. Okay, so that's really the plan there. Next week, we will cover, uh, we will start next Monday, the lecture of DNS. So that, you know, that's a very long topic. Um, that might take two weeks to solve, I can't remember but it's a very fun lab. So we will have one of the seed labs for the first time uh, this, sem this semester, right? Given that now you've completed the, the you know, let's say the first six weeks up until the exam of your Unix course, your intro to Unix. So at this point, I expect you guys to be uh, experts, right? Experts in Linux. And so we are ready to move on to the more advanced topics of Linux. So, Definitely, definitely for next week, um, as part of your homework, let's say, make sure you have two version, two CVMs. So you will need at least two, you know, the original and a clone. So you can clone the CVM uh, using VMware. So use VMware, uh, you know, professional, whatever it is you have. Um, and you can, you should create two CVMs. That's unfortunately uh, sort of non-negotiable, right? Uh, you just need to have it. You technically, if you can, if you can afford to in your RAM, really, you really should have um, three, okay? Because we're going to start setting up environments like this where we have a DNS server all in Linux, right? So we're going to use bind for that. Oops. We're going to use bind, bind nine, right, on Linux. And then we're going to have a DNS client. So obviously, we first need to just establish that whole DNS communication. But then we're going to do a few fun things, like having an attacker try to disrupt DNS. And the reason for doing this is to kind of get a better, you know, by, by kind of attacking DNS, we'll kind of get a feel for how DNS works, right? And as you know, so this will be your first serious Linux configuration, okay? So this is everything we've done so far. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Now we're going to begin our uh, more challenging uh, aspects of Unix configuration. But it, this lab comes with a really good handout. And I will do, of course, a lecture um, on Monday about that. And then we'll see how there's a few problems that I want you to do. Uh, about this lab, so we'll see. Might take a week and a half, two weeks. I'm not entirely sure. After that, we'll do account management, but we are now getting into the more serious aspects of Unix. Uh, obviously, we'll, be, we'll still be doing scripting along the way there. You'll get to use DIG, the program that you already are very familiar with from the beginning of the semester and so on. All right, so that's, but that's next week. Today, we're just going to take it easy, sort of, uh, with an easy uh, focus on just wrapping up, really, Grappenock and the fine. And basically, what I usually do is um, I, I give you two problems for you to solve. And, you know, they're kind of like research type of problems that you have to research. All right. So uh, today, then, um, as I said, I saw a lot of you already uh, uh, uploaded your cron homework so that's good um 
so then let's go over with, um, let's start with Grepinoff, right? So we're going to kind of get started with the lecture today. So, all right, so a little bit of review from last week, just really short uh, so that everyone is situated. We were talking about Grepinoff, right? Um, so basically, grep we said was so grep uh, searches so it searches its input right for lines containing a given pattern. So for lines. lines uh, containing a given pattern. So it's a way of searching things, right? And that's what you're going to do in your homework assignment. You're just going to search for certain parameters. So you users will use grep to search files, right? So let's say that you wrote some C code a couple of years ago in, in the system, you don't really know where those files are located, you can grab them, right? You can look for them. So let us say that we want to find out all about, uh, all, of, all about a certain user's current processes, right? So we talked about this, we wanna get all those. So basically what do we need to do? We need to first pipe the output of the PS command to the grep and search for the username. So this would be something like yes, some flags, right? This will give us in the operating system in Linux, this will give our Unix, this will give us information about the processes. Then we're going to pipe it right with the with the straight line there. And then after piping it, we pipe it into grep. And grep is going to then search for this pattern Smith. So it searches its input, which would be this, right? Four lines and it returns all the lines that will, would contain the pattern Smith, okay? So this would display processes that include the word Smith, in it, okay? And that's what we had said before. AUX are just parameters that allow you to display or list every single process on the system. Now the awk command we said, um, and also kind of review that one. The awk command all right, so the awk command can be used to selectively, so used to selectively. Oops, select uh, manipulate the output basically. Manipulate the output. And basically, the output of other commands in a more general way than grep, right? But basically, you used to selectively manipulate the output. In a, in a more powerful way. So these, these two, uh, Grep and Off, I mean, there's books about them, okay? So we could spend a lot of time looking at them. I'm just kind of introducing them here, uh, and you guys will kind of research it a little bit more to solve the problem that you want, and that, that should help you to get a good feel for it. So Auth can be good for picking out and possibly rearranging columns within command output. So for instance, let's take a, the example Again, with um, the, um, the processes, we can say PS, another, oops, PS dash AUX, right? Something like that. Pipe into grep, grep. This time we search for Smith again, but after that, we pipe that output into awk. So we would have awk over here, right? And awk, uh, now we can say something like it in, when, within single quotes and within curly brackets, right? We're gonna say print dollar sign one, 
Okay, so this will allow us now to select just one of the columns. So basically the output that we get from this that gets redirected there um, would have rows and columns. You can think of it in, in that sense as having rows and columns. And so this would allow us very much like Excel to, to get the, the columns. So this awk command prints only the first field. Let's say, you know, this awk command uh, prints only prints only the first field. So like printing only the the first field for every row uh, for each, you know, from each line. So that's basically the equivalent of the first column each line, right? Uh, that is passed to it. So remember, this one passes to grep and awk, and then this one passes to awk just by using the pipe. So remember, these are the pipe and you know, the pipe that we've already learned um, before. So, you know, awk can basically be used to uh, manipulate. So awk is used uh, to manipulate data, uh, to retrieve columns, to sum average. So the uses of awk, the uses of awk you know, it can be for uh, retrieve columns, Right, uh, you can sum columns, etc. Uh, average, you know, it's just you know, like Excel, uh, average a couple of number, you know, etc. It's very powerful, basically, and there's a lot to do with it. Okay, so then you know, this is kind of the, the information for um, for grep. Um, Let's take a look at grep here. Now you can also pass to grep, you know, you can also in grep set up, for instance, um, other examples Wait a minute here. You know, you can, you can, you can try things like grep, you know, let's say Python, right, some pattern in uh, home. Right, so you can specify a folder where you specifically want to look for something in grep, right? Um, so usually the, you know, now this can also be recursive, right? So recursive would just mean that you do grep dash r some pattern, let me write more generic, some pattern, and then etc, the etc folder, right, so that you can search the entire contents of etc, right, so you can try that. Um, you can try it without the, this should be, you know, Python is also the pattern, you can try it without the R. So you can specify any path here that you want, any path, Okay, that you want there. Um, yep, so that's one example of grep. Obviously, with uh, with awk, you can do um, you can do more operations, like you can do counters, you can do sums, averages, etc. Right, so we talked about that. So for instance, if you want to, so let's, let's go over here. So if you want to think about awk, right, and remember you do, you know, like a, a thing that you want to process in curly brackets, and then you could say counter 
plus equal column five. Right, and basically what you're doing there is you're kind of just looking at column five and you're, you know, you're counting the information there. Uh, and then you can say, you know, end processing. And now I'm going to just print the results of counter. So you can say print, you know, counter. Right, so it allows you functionality to do the calculation and then print out the results. Uh, let's see what else. You can also do a search in awk. So for instance, like an if statement, you could say, oh, I should have said awk. So you can say awk, uh, single quote, and you can say where column four is equal to, let's say, user. So you can say user one, or user two, you know, user three. So it allows you to do, you know, kinds of if statements uh, there. And don't forget, if you open the single quote here, you close the single quote. So that these are just simple examples um, um, of this. All right. So we talked about, you know, searching for a specific pattern doing like a counter of a column. So basically you can see here that you know, number four, let me use a different color. Number four, uh, number five, right? These are references to columns and then we can perform operations um, as we see fit. And also divide. So let's say for instance, that you wanted to do counter uh, but you want to divide it, let's say, by 1,024 for whatever reason, right? So you can do that operation. Okay. And the trick is just to pipe everything through. But those are just examples of Hawk itself. Hey, let's say for instance that I want. Uh, let's 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 take a, an example here. Um, let's say you want the size of some files. Uh, you want the size of some files, so, you know, DF, right? We learned that command, DF gives you size, and then dash H, something, maybe some other flags here. You pipe that, and then you look for a specific pattern, prep pattern, out of the output of those, def, uh, of, that, of this command, which gives you sizes, but it gives you other information, so you need the column for sizes. So then you're going to have to say something like, oh, and by the way, awk, and I want to print um, and I want to print column three, because that's the one that actually has the total, right? But you can still do even more because you can get that number three and add it, average it, sum it, et cetera. Okay. Any questions guys so far? Is this making sense how it works? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so exactly, it's pretty easy. So you get, um, as I said, the output that you want, that's some rows, look for the, in those rows, the pattern that you want. And then finally you awk it. So you select the column that you want, but beyond that, you can also compare to a specific value. And then you can do operations like adding, subtracting, division, and so on. Okay. So pretty important. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'll, I'll give you a problem or two. We'll see. Um, and, you know, you just have to craft that. It'll be just basically, you can do one line or two lines. That, that's fine. But the trick is that you need to pipe the information from one to the other so that, you know, 
the command line, what I want you guys to, to kind of get a feel for the command line is that the command line is not just like, oh, I, I'm going to type if config and I get the IP of the computer. Command line is actually an extremely powerful tool in itself. Think of it as almost like a calculator, right? So in that sense, right? You can do seriously powerful operations on it. We'll later see that we can actually use, you know, you guys are, you know, are gonna take your data structures course or at some point, or you've maybe taken it already. And in that, you learn that you can sort data and so on by the sorting algorithms, queuing and all that. Well, you could just literally do that on the terminal, you know, get some data, how do you get some data in the terminal? Cat my data dot txt. That's pretty much it. Pipe it and then grep it, you know, grep something that you want out of it. And then after grepping it, sort it in some way and, you know, talk it. <laughs> and in one line, you're going to become extremely efficient because really, and also very fast. I don't know if you know, but the, 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 the Linux kernel is highly optimized for speed. But we'll see some examples of this uh, when we look at uh, our clustering um, discussion later when we look at three computers in Unix working together. Um, so that should be just some simple examples there. Okay. And the rest you can just, you know, Google online. I'm sure you'll find a lot of information. Okay, so we looked at that. What else can we look at? Now, remember, you can also use the other redirections that we learned about, right? Remember that redirection of standard in, standard out? We will come back to those ideas. Uh, but you can think of, of that as well. So, We talked about graph, we've talked about some, if you don't like the whole, you can also do awk like this, right? So I know some of you would prefer sum equal sum plus, you know, plus dollar sign five, right? So you can do that and then N and then just, I'm gonna continue down here. Then you could say print sum. Okay, so that's just a way of, um, of writing this out. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can hit N here again and then continue adding more in, more curly brackets with more information. Okay. So we talked about grep and awk. Now the, um, okay. All right, so I think that's all of grep and awk that I'm gonna give you and then the rest you can figure out on your own. The next command that we're gonna look at is then find. Find is another command and it's just yet another thing that you can, you can figure out how to use, right? So you can figure out how you wanna do this. But the, the, the beauty of this is that you can also pipe this one, right? So you can now, you know, we've talked about grep and awk. You know, we talked about redirection of standard in, standard out, we know pipe. And now we're gonna introduce, oops, find. And find is yet another, another uh, little term that might help you to find the information that you need. So we just, first of all, we have to, to learn the basic, simple, if you will, uh, syntax of how, how it works, right? And then, you know, you can fit it in as you see fit. All right, so let's provide a, a short but formal definition of find itself. Right, so I have a question on the chat. Uh, by pipe, do you mean combining multiple commands together? By pipe, I mean 
pipe is a redirection, okay? So what I mean by that is what I was doing over here. Um, a better example is this one. You see, this is pipe. This is pipe. It means that the output of this, uh, this one here, the output of that becomes the input of the next one. Then I do some processing over here with this one and I pipe it. So the output of this one becomes the input of the other one through pipe. So think of pipe as, I think the intuition is that it's literally like, you know, whatever I do here goes in here and comes out here to be processed by the next step. Does that make sense? Okay, great, excellent. That's what you have to do, all right? So whenever I, that's just, uh, that's not me, that's just Linux or Unix speak, okay? That you can do this piping, but you can combine, uh, what were we, you know, commands with grep, which I already defined, with awk, which I already defined by using all these little elements. And the whole point is that it gives you all this power to just do things on the command line. You don't even have to write a script. You don't even have to write code. You literally just do it on the, on the command line. One great thing about a bash, bash is uh, one of the scripting languages we'll look at at some point in the semester. And in bash, you can literally just write Linux commands in the script itself. So you can do all these things that we're doing in the, in the, in the command line typing directly in bash okay but we'll see that a little bit later all right so that's the idea and as i said i i will give you a couple of problems that will really help you um you know, to, to figure it out so i'll try to make them interesting all right so let's see um a few last things oh, oh yeah so we were defining fine now, uh, formally, we're going to provide a definition for the find command. And it's just another one that you can use. So as the name implies, obviously, it's about finding something, right? So the formal definition of find is really on the terminal. You just type find, okay? And then obviously some, some parameters here, some flags. So find, let's say, find location. Find helps you to locate things. So find locates files. Okay. Uh, so find locates files with common with common uh, specified characteristics. Specified characteristics. Okay, uh, searching anywhere in the system you tell it to look. All right, and it searches anywhere in the system you tell it to look. So, for instance, let's let's look at the syntax here. Pretty easy. You just type find, and then here you say where to look. where to look, and then in the next entry, you say the matching criteria. The matching criteria, okay? So that's the next one. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you use this one, by now you should know what that means, right? right? Uh, if you use that as where to look, then what do you think this will do? What is this in Unix? Uh, that would just specify the directory. Which one? Uh, root. Root, right? And what is root in the file system? What would that imply, basically? Just everything. Everything, very good, excellent. Root is everything, right? It's the entire file system. And so, um, yeah, exactly. So, so that's how it works. It's got a few matching criteria elements that we can take a look. So look at, so for instance, let's say here, a matching criteria. All right. 
Uh, we've got elements like time, size, name, for instance, right? So uh, user. So we can look at matching criteria such as time. We can look at matching criteria like size. We can look at matching criteria like name, user. All right, and so all of these elements you will need to use to solve the two problems that I will give you. So here, let's say uh, dash a time, right? And then you specify n, right? So what, what this implies, what this implies is basically file access n days ago, okay? File access, access, n days ago, okay? Uh, the, the next one, size would be size of file in blocks of 512 bytes. So you'll just have to do the conversion, right? So if you're looking for a file of a specific size, you just have to know that when you specify an n parameter, that implies the size of file in blocks of 512. So it's like n times 512. So you'll do here dash size size um, n, right? So it, you know, think of it as n times 512 to arrive at your X size that you want. Now a name, this one's pretty simple. Uh, dash name, let's say Nam, right? And so on here, just being consistent with the book. So this would be name is Nam. And we'll see an example in a second. Uh, but these are also some of the flags that you can specify in your matching criteria. Oops, did I do that in the wrong place? Yeah, I did. So this should be name. All right, so let's do the next, on the next page then we can do user, dash user. Uh, so that one's just user. Right, and file owner is user basically. File owner is user. So if I ask you on the problem, I want you to find this file where this user is like this, but they last accessed the file so many days ago, and the file is greater than this size, and you know you'll have to use a combination of all of those and anything else, there's more, right? So uh, there's more examples. So let's take a look at, at one of these. Um, so let's say um, that I want, let's say that I want, so let's do an example. All right, so I'm gonna do, find dot, the, the, the underline obviously doesn't exist. I'm just putting it there. Maybe I'll get rid of it. But it just means, you know, that's the first thing. And then you say uh, where dash name is, and then you can do dot C. And then you say something like dash print. All right, so that's how find works. So basically you're saying, I'm gonna change the color here. I'm gonna say I have this and that and that, All right? So three parameters. So the first one says, um, I wanna find, right, something, this, I wanna find that somewhere. So where, first of all, where? What is what does that mean? Where is that? Dot. In Unix, when you say dot, you know how you say cd dot or you say cd dot dot? You guys have done dot dot. 
what does cd dot dot do? Close up a directory. Close up a directory, right? It really goes like to the parent of your current directory because that's what dot dot basically means. It's the parent of the directory. What about dot? What would that mean? The current directory? Current working directory, exactly, very good. So it's gonna search in the current working directory. Right, so it searches in the current working directory and then it searches for what? It's going to search, <coughs> we already established that name means, name is NAM. So it's gonna look for files in the current working directory that have a name equal to this one over here. And what is that? Basically, you know, asterisk is usually just a wild card, right? It usually means wild or wild card. So what does dot C mean probably? Any all files with the dot C extension? Basically all key files. So all key source files. Basically, okay. so all key source files is going to look for them, right? It's going to try to find them, uh, and then it just prints them. So it here it lists it lists the files, the path names. All right, so it gives you the output that you need, and then you can pipe that information into the next thing you know, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so that's really uh, the idea with um, the find command. It kind of works like that. Remember, whenever you want to get information about a file, you can use uh, cat, right? This allows you to get all the data from the file. There's something called tail which allows you to get uh, the last 10 lines of a file. This gets all lines. This gets last 10 lines of file. Now, when would this be useful? Like if, for instance, a log, right? So when you're logging, maybe you just wanna look at the, you know, the last lines that are coming in. Um, Okay, so, so that's basically the idea there. Okay, so cat is uh, to print out all the lines and tail is going to be to um, look at the log information. Okay. Okay, so that's um, the two commands. All right, so, um, All right, so one last thing that we can take a look at here is uh, the, relationship, the relationship between commands and files. So um, this is kind of to, you know, to wrap up the idea, and then we will look at the two problems that you can work on. Okay, so the relationship between commands and files. Okay, so the Unix operating system does not distinguish between commands and files. So let's, let's take a look at that. So relationship between uh, relationship between uh, commands and files. relationship between commands and files. Uh, the Unix operating system does not distinguish between commands and files, basically. So whenever you type something like ls or you type cd or, you know, whatever you're typing, right, it's basically, it's like you're invoking really just little files. So you, usually Unix commands are executable files stored in one of the several standard locations within the file system. 
So that's kind of important to just, I just wanted to throw that in there as a miscellaneous thing that you have these little, these commands are actually scripts themselves. Um, Unix commands are executable files stored in one of several standard locations. Um, so access to commands is exactly equivalent to access to these files. So really, you know, that's why when you talk about, you know, when you talk about Unix and sysadmin, you really are always talking, I don't know if you make the connection, but you're always talking about scripts, all right? Even the commands themselves are scripts or the scripts that you're writing in either like Python uh, or Perl that we kind of looked at or bash itself, right? So all of these, okay, are just basically, um, everything is a script, right? So usually Unix commands are executable files stored in one of several standard locations within the file system. Access to commands is exactly equivalent to access to these files. Um, and basically you just have to know that, you know, when you're using you know, the terminal, you know, it, it has a search path where it can find all of these commands. Okay. So that's really the last thing. Okay. So I think that pretty much wraps up. Um, fine. Let me see if I have anything else. Obviously, I should, I should mention that you can use all of these things within the cron environment itself. So that's also something else that can happen. Okay. But we've talked about some of the patterns, obviously, some of the examples here, like time, size, name, uh, and user. All right, so I think at this point, uh, you're ready to have the two problems. Um, so I'll give you two examples here. And I'll write them up on the, on the bright space. Okay, and then that's what you guys will work on. All right, so let's see here. All right, here we go. So let's, let me now switch over to the Brightspace environment. And I'm just going to create these two problems for you guys. So let's go to Grepanox. So this is the link. Okay. And on here, let's create the first assignment, two assignment. All right. So this will be the Grepanox problem. All right, so this, both of these, I'm going to give you um, a week to work on, right? So they'll be due a week from today. We'll see how it goes. So basically, uh, this is the problem. You know, you'll research Grepanoc to solve this a little bit more. And then you want to do something like the following. Imagine that the division director in your company, right, wants to know what percentage of the total disk space in your area is used by the chem group. Okay, obviously you don't have a chem group, right? So you'll pick either you create a group, which might be a lot of work, or just find a group. It could even be done by user. It's really not uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Just think about the idea. You have to look at the entire, the division director of your, of your company wants to know what percentage of the total disk space in your area or your server is used by the chem group. Does that make sense, guys? I'll write it here, but do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Using... Okay, great. So using grep and awk, oops, using grep and awk, 
Um, so using Grepanoc, do the following. Obviously, you have to create your own group or, or even a, a user. Let's say the division director of your company wants, um, wants to know what percentage, what percentage of the total, what percentage of the total disk space uh, in your server is used by, uh, let's say, the chem group or user X, you know, whatever, right? So one of these, but that you have to use Grepanoc to sol solve this problem. So obviously, first of all, you need the Linux command, right? That gives you some information about the system, disk space, etc. Then after that, you want to grep some of that output, and then you want to aux some of it because you have to do a percentage here. What percentage? Or, or something along those lines. Okay, so that's this homework. So let's call this, this is simple enough just for you to practice. So let's call this one grep and awk. All right. And the due date for this will be today is the 17th, so the 24th. You don't have a homework for the 24th. Um, okay, by 10 p.m. For the 24th. All right, so that's the first problem. Any questions on the first problem? As you can see, it's, it's, it's an easy thing, but you have to show the lines of Grepanoc, and then you have to show the output that, that you got it and then explain. So you can basically do all of it in one page submission. Questions about this one? Not yeah. at the moment. Good. All right. The next problem, as you might imagine, pretty similar. This one uh, is mainly focused on fine. However, you can you can com combine these if you feel that you you know. I want you to use your creativity, basically. Okay. Um, so let's let's take a another one. Um, so let's say here, homework fine. Right. So. That's the find command. So this is going to be due also on the 24th. So these two problems will be due on that day by 10 p.m. Um, so this command, let's see, using find, do the following, although Mainly, you could, if you think that you need to use the other thing, you know, do so. Using find, do the follow. There you go. So, let's, let me think about this one. Uh, oh, so, this one's easy. So, display. Display a list or a directory listing, list or directory listing for all files under some directory, some directory, you, you have to choose it obviously. You know, e, you know, let's say, for example, uh, oops. example, you know, the chem directory, right? So display a list or directory listing of all files under some directory like chem, which are 
larger than one megabyte. And and that haven't oops, that haven't uh, been modified in a month. Make sense? Okay, so again, you'll have to find all the files from some, you know, display a long directory listing for all files under some folder like the chem that are larger than one megabyte and that haven't been modified in a month. Okay, so that's basically the problem. So as you can see, also pretty straightforward. Look at the notes that I gave you, but this kind of, um, you know, it'll help you to practice by trying to achieve this goal, All right? So this will be, be open today. All right, and it'll be due, um, so it's due on the 24th, so it'll stay open until the 27th. And that is, oops, allow. And there you have them. So you have two problems, grep and knock and find, they're due next week. And that will, would be pretty much uh, your assignment. Uh, all of this, sure, I can, uh, let me do that now. <laughs> all of this, remember, is in the book, so you can just follow along in the book, but let me go back to the whiteboard here. And PDF, save it. This is, uh, what was this? This was find, grab, off. I'm about to load them right now. All right, so I'm gonna go back to Brightspace. Okay, so under Grepinoff, then I'm going to load the notes basically that I uh, that we just discussed. I'll summarize everything. All right, fine. Grep and awk. All right, that file should now be on your Brightspace. You can take a look at it here. Um, click on it. There it is. And that's what we talked about today. But certainly, you know, follow along in the book. Um, all right. Any question? Any any other questions? Okay. I don't think so. All right, so the slides are loaded. So at this point, that's basically um, the, the new content for today. So I'm gonna stop the recording.